Well, Raider Nation, that's it. The season is over. Let's go ahead and talk about it, man. Well, here we are, Raider Nation. Final game of the season. Playoffs, wild card playoff weekend, and we were the first game right here on Saturday. Well, we fell to the Bengals 26-19, ending our season on pretty much a high note. It was a great game all the way around. Uh, a lot of mistakes made by the Raiders' offense and defense. It's a tough loss, but honestly, Raiders, Raider Nation, I'm not all that upset about it. Um, with everything that this team has gone through this year, we were lucky to even make it this far. So let's go over the stats. I don't want to waste everybody's time. You know, I just want to go ahead and, uh, you know, just kind of get this out of the way. We're going to go over the stats for the Raiders. Derek Carr went 29 of 54 for 301 yards, one touchdown, and a game-deciding interception. That's how I'm going to put it. Josh Jacobs ran 13 times for 83 yards at a 6.4-yard average. Dude was beasting, man. Just really wish we could have fed him the ball more, but we were playing from behind most of the game. Derek Carr, one rush for 20 yards. It was spectacular, actually. Receiving, Darren Waller led our receiving core. Seven receptions on 12 targets for 76 yards. Zay Jones, eight targets, five receptions, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Hunter Renfro, Eight receptions on 11 targets for 58 yards. Josh Jacobs, five targets, four receptions, 44 yards. Brian Edwards, six targets, three receptions, 41 yards. Deshaun Jackson was targeted twice. One was a botched... I mean, he dropped the shit out of that ball. There's really nothing else you could say about that right there in the red zone. He had one reception for 26 yards. Jalen Richard won for four on two targets. And Foster Morrow was targeted three times. Didn't catch a single solitary one. Fumbles, Hunter Renfro and Derek Carr. Derek Carr's was because Foster Morrow was blocking and completely just missed the block altogether uh, as far as I was concerned. Um... Uh, in my opinion, that's all on Foster Morrow. Although, you know, Derek Carr was in the windup. Just idiotic mistakes when it comes to this. He lost the fumble. Casey Hayward had a pass deflection. So did Nate Hobbs. Defense. Which, yeah, we're over here now. Denzel Perryman led the team with six tackles, three assists. Desmond Trufant, who was literally being used all day long, especially after Faceon went out. Three tackles, three assists. One of those tackles was for a loss. 
Max Crosby had three tackles, three assists. He was fired up most of the game, man. Two tackles for a loss. One of those was a sack. Roderick Teamer, three tackles, two assists. Divine Diablo, who went out of the game with a concussion. Pretty much at third quarter, it was three tackles, five assists. Damian Square, two tackles, one assist. One of those tackles was for a loss. Corey Littleton had to come into the game for Divine Diablo. He had two tackles, two assists. Brandon Facey on two tackles. Nate Hobbs, two tackles, three assists. Casey Hayward, one tackle. Jonathan Hankins, one tackle, two assists. Quentin Jefferson, one tackle, two assists. One sack. And it was for a loss, of course. Solomon Thomas, one tackle. Dolan Levitt. One tackle, one assist. Trayvon Morig, who was suspect out there today, one tackle. KJ Wright, one assist. Kyle Wilbur, which I haven't said his name in quite a while. He's got goose eggs. Yannick Ngakwe had one assist, and Carl Nassib had three assists. Special teams. Daniel Carlson, man, four for four. His longest was 47. He had one extra point. <clears throat> A.J. Cole punted the ball twice. 58 was his long. His average is 49.5. Kickoff returns. Three returns for Tyron Johnson for 24.3 yards. His longest was 35. And then Peyton Barber with his botch. He had one return, no yards. Punt returns. Hunter Renfro, one return, no yards. Now you go over here to the Bengals and you look at their stats. Joe Burrow went 24 of 34 for 244 yards and two touchdowns. Joe Mixon, 17 carries, 48 yards, an average of 2.8. And Jamar Chase, three carries for 23 yards at an average of 7.7. Okay, receiving, Jamar Chase, nine receptions for 116 yards on 12 targets. And then C.J. Uz Uzuma, six receptions, 64 yards, and a touchdown. Joe Mixon, four for 28. Tyler Boyd, four for 26, and a touchdown. T. Higgins, one for 10. Trey Hendrickson was the one who forced the fumble from Derek Carr. Interceptions, Jermaine Pratt was the one who picked the ball off at the end of the game. One interception for two yards. Lots of pass deflections by them. Logan Wilson had the most tackles for him at nine tackles and three assists. You go look at the team stats, and I don't have those posted up. But we beat them in damn near everything. Total yards, 385 to 308. Passing yards, we had 282. They had 225. Rushing yards, 103 to 83. Average yards per play, 5.4 to 5.0. Points scored, 19 to 26. Fumbles lost, 1 to 0. Sacks allowed, we allowed three sacks because this offensive line was just absolutely horrendous today. They allowed two sacks. Third down efficiency, 44% to 41%. And then we lost the time of possession, 28.09 to 31.51. Penalties were both even at seven. So this is basically what we have come to, Raider Nation. Is that this was a very hard-fought game. And it went all the way down to the wire. The referees were very happy with the flags. They also were not calling what they should have been calling. Looking for the easy way out. Calling some type of holding instead of calling... Pass interference when pass interference needed to be called. It's just defensive holding. You know, there, there was a lot missed by the referees, but we can't blame this on them. 
We had every opportunity and even had a chance at the end of the game to tie it and send it to overtime. And what Derek Carr tried to do, forcing it in there, uh, it costed him. It definitely costed him. But in overall, I'm really not angry. We weren't even supposed to be here. It would have been nice to win. But honestly, we weren't. We didn't belong here. It just shows the tenacity of this team. That when they work together, they are a poetry in motion. They can get it done. It's just today we fell short. And that's really what it is. Season grade for the overall team, man. I think it's time that I can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to put everything that has happened throughout the year uh, definitely in perspective and in consideration for when I give this grade. Because what this team went through, I don't think... Any other team in the NFL could have gone through what this team went through and could say that they would have made it to the playoffs. I just don't think that that would have been even possible. Really don't. I think this team is very special. I think this team has a lot of fight and a lot of heart, and, and they fought all the way up until the final whistle. Now, we were ripped off in this game Due to the early whistle that happened. Just another asterisk next to a Raiders loss in the playoffs. Because it's always some bullshit that happens that throws everybody off like an early whistle before the pass is thrown. Or because the whistle was blown because they thought the dude was out of bounds. Like I said, these referees are something else. But I, that shouldn't take away from the team. That shouldn't take away from the team at all. Because this team fought really hard. They just came up short. And with everything that they've had to go through from John Gruden to Henry Ruggs to Damon Arnett to losing guys like Denzel Good and Incognito having to reshape that line. All with a brand new coach who's never been a head coach in the NFL at all during his whole tenure as being a special teams coach in the NFL. Still having Greg Olson as an offensive coordinator, pretty much running a ghost playbook that John Gruden came up with. This team fought even through all the shit. They fought when Darren Waller didn't show up for the last four games of the season, they fought. And they still hung on to get us into the playoffs. And they damn near shipped themselves straight into the second round if it wasn't for a few bad play calls and a forced interception at the end of the game. Because this very well could have went into overtime and it didn't. My overall grade for this team, for this season, is a B. And you guys can call me crazy. You can say whatever you feel is necessary. Maybe you, you believe that I gave them too high of a grade. Or maybe you believe that I could have possibly given them a B plus Or a B-. minus. You know, or a C plus. But I'm not going to do that because you should also not only measure the team on what their stats look like on paper and what they look like on paper, but and not only about how they perform, but how strong-willed and how much heart did they have to be able to get through everything they had to get through to get to this point. It sure would have tasted... A whole lot sweeter if they would have won it all or at least won one playoff game. But I'm not going to be mad about this. And I'm going to give them a generous grade of a B because I do think that this team has 
potential. Definitely has potential. And we're definitely not bottom of the barrel anymore. We're not a 4-12 and team. We're not a 7-9 and team. Okay? Regardless on how you guys feel and how, how you guys and ladies feel about how this season went, it could have been a whole hell of a lot worse. And if this team was, wasn't as tenacious and as strong-willed as they were, it would have been a whole lot worse. If Derek Carr wouldn't have finally taken the lead, which is what he needed to do, it would have been a whole lot worse. This team fought till the very end. And we should all be proud of that. I've been talking with a few of y'all out here. And a, a lot of y'all are really just sour grapes. And hey, you have every right to feel the way you want to feel. But I can tell you this right now. You're going to be extremely hard to please. You're going to be extremely hard to please. Now, Derek Carr has finally played in his first playoff game. He went over 300 yards in that playoff game, but he had one touchdown and one costly interception. It's really not bad stats for your first playoff game played. But in all actuality, he is now 0-1 in playoffs. Now, even though I've given them a grade of a B, I do believe that they get ripped off a lot in Madden. I don't know what their rating is this year, but I'm sure it's not going to be a rating that is as generous as what I am going to want them to have in next year's game. Because with the Raiders being good, I may actually go off and buy Madden next year just to where I can experience playing with this great team. So I'm thinking that their overall Madden rating should be anywhere in between 87 to 89. But then again, with the boneheaded mistakes they, they did today and how bad the offensive line played because Derek Carr was on his back three times and hurried a shit ton to have to make quick decisions. I'd say maybe an 85. You know what I mean? Maybe just an 85 in Madden would do. 85 to 87, you know. It's been a really fun season. It really has. And, and yeah, man, hey, shout out your boy, man, for finally making it a full season. One week into the playoffs, here I am giving you a post-game review. And this will not be the last video. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping to get in and a part of a few more before the season is up for me and I wait on the combine. But before we talk about that, we already know that we're going to want to talk about this. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that, that button got stuck. Let's go back to that. Now, who do we move on from? Or do we move on at all? These are the questions that are going to have to be answered in the offseason. We still have the rest of the playoffs to get through before they decide that they are going to make a decision on what direction this team goes now. We've made it to the playoffs. And I just, I feel, in my opinion, Okay, moves are going to be made. It doesn't matter what the hell I think anyway. Moves are going to be made, but I believe, to me, you don't separate the nucleus. Do we move on from our quarterback? I don't know. I don't know. Do we move on from our GM? Fuck no. Fuck no. We give Mayock one more year. You know what I'm saying? Mayock has not had a chance to draft by himself or to have full control when it comes to the drafting process yet. Now, whether we want to blame 
Mayock for the, the bum draft picks that we picked up, or whether we want to blame Gruden, or whatever. Look, it was a congregation of the minds in between Mayock and John Gruden for the draft picks that we have picked up the past four years. We've gotten some, and we've missed on some. It's pretty much about even. Now it's time to see what Mayock can do having the sole majority of what goes on, who gets picked up, and who doesn't before we make a decision on getting rid of him. Passaccia. Good old Rich Passaccia. Do we offer him a contract to be the head coach next season? These are all questions that are going to be answered this offseason. I don't know I don't know when, but they will be answered with before the combine, I'm sure. I don't think we need to get rid of Mayock. I'm really up in the air about Derek Carr. I really like the guy, but I don't know if he's ever going to win a championship for us. With us, I don't know if he is or not. I know he holds every damn record as a Raider quarterback. And I would love for him to see I would I would love for him to see the end of his career as a Raider. But we got to win championships. And he's got to be the one to make sure that we win championships. And regardless on how this game played out today, throwing that interception right there on the goal line that could have moved us right up into contention to actually win this game in overtime. He's had a lot of fourth quarter comebacks, but this was the one that we really needed him to step up, and he didn't. He didn't. So I don't know about I don't know about Derek Carr. They're going to make the decision on him this year as well. I know that I don't feel too damn confident on moving on from him. I just, I don't know that if, I don't know if we will. Okay. And if we do, you know, I will be upset there for a little bit because I, I really do care for this. I, I do really, I really do care for him as a person. He's a wonderful guy. I've never met him, but just everything you hear about him and, you know, Hearing some of the stories about him through people who do know him. He's a great guy, man. He really is. He's, he's a great dude, but it's just... You know, I, I try not to be upset. I don't feel bad that we lost this game, but it still hurts. You know? Being that damn close. All to throw an interception at the end of the damn game. And I know that wasn't the only reason why we lost. But that is the only reason why we didn't tie. Why we didn't tie the game. And like I was saying before, just because, hey, it's off season. We still got more things to talk about. And I went and got a full subscription of StreamYard to where I can host this live event for the John Gruden email chronicle finale. We still need to talk about this. John Gruden and the NFL, that story is definitely not done yet and it won't be done until the results and the verdict come out from the courts. But first we need to find out is did the NFL postpone? Did they hold off till the very last minute and try to settle out of court? These are all questions and things like that that, you know, have not been answered yet, but we will get the answers later on down the line. And we'll know all about the John Gruden email debacle, which is what I now coin email gate. And the full story will finally be out and we'll see we'll actually get to find out. If they're going to release all the emails of the whole investigation underneath the Washington football team and their misogynistic views and actions against their cheerleaders and women workers within the organization. 
but I'm going to talk with all these guys about it on StreamYard live and make sure it's going to be definitely live to where all of y'all can come into the chat room and mingle with every single one of us who were the guests on the John Gruden email chronicles. Now also, you guys know, if you've been following the channel and you uh, saw what I was able to put together, because I am solely going to take credit for putting that together, I called up Hardcore Raider on Wednesday, or was it Thursday? And it's been almost two years since I spoke to him. <clears throat> well, we all went from talking a little bit of football to talking playoffs to talking about, you know, how, what the show used to be, which was the Hardcore Raider Nation podcast, all the way up to reuniting and doing a playoff show. And it was the absolute funnest thing I have done this season. Right next to the John Gruden email chronicles and mingling with all the other new YouTubers out there who have come out within the past three years when I was gone. It's been a great season all the way around. It's why I don't hate and I'm not real upset about how everything went because in all around when it came to football Everything was just real cool, man, real mellow, and, and you know, it was, it felt good. It, it made me love doing these videos and coming on YouTube again. With all the new friends and new family members I have made, and also reuniting old family members back together to do shows, man, I'm glad that I'm just actually able to get out here and do what little bit I can to help the nation. You know, and help this team and help this fan base understand the legacy and the history behind this team. It's why we fight with such heart and such tenacity. And all of us bleed silver and black, every single one of us. And that's what makes us unique. But we did a show. For the pre-playoff edition of the Hardcore Raider Nation podcast on Hardcore Raiders channel, I screened uh, screened the uh, media and the audio and posted it on my channel as well. So if you have not checked that out, man, go over there and check that out. It's a huge blast from the past. Feels like 2019 all over again, man. It was a great show. It really was, and I want to I want to give it give it to Hardcore man because Hardcore can sure map out a show. He sure can. He is like one of the best when it comes to formatting a show and moving on from topic to topic. Being the moderator that he is, man, he's just got a knack for it. And I ain't, I'm not gonna lie, I'm envious of it, and I'm just really happy that he took my phone call and he even considered coming on here and doing this especially with the the way his life has become hectic along with grimy raider dave man grimy raider dave showed up too and he was more than willing to get up there and come do it one last time you know what i mean except for and and watts too bro watts was right there with us everything just seemed to fall into place and it just felt so good to be able to sit down and talk with these guys again and talk some raider football and uh you know, we basically did it as one last hoorah, but I, I have a feeling that that's not going to be the case. I think that we're going to be kicking this thing off, bringing out more Raider content for every single one of you, sprinkled with a little bit of history. So anyway, Raider Nation, man, we did lose... We are out of the playoffs, but there's hope. There really is hope. This team does look good. They play great at times, and then there's other times where, you know, they've got a show that 
they can pull themselves up and be able to work through the shortcomings, especially when, you know, you're shooting yourselves in the foot. They just got to clean it up. That's all there is to it. This is a good team. It's a good team. And just be happy, Raider Nation, that we are not bottom of the barrel anymore. We are a playoff team. We are a playoff team. And that means that it's going to be a lot better to play with them in Madden if that's what you like to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to boost up Hunter Renfrew to like 81 receptions in Tecmo Super Bowl. <laughs> so anyway, Raider Nation, stay tuned, man, to the Raider Critique for your, you know, any type of extra Raider content that you may need throughout the off-season and on-season. Got a one-stop shop right here, man. Right here at the Raider Critique. And then, of course, there's plenty of Raider YouTubers out there to follow up on things that I don't even touch up on. But, you know, y'all have a wonderful off-season. Until I see you all again, you already know what it is, man. It's Raider Nation for life. We may have lost, man. We may have lost this battle, but we ain't lost the war. We're going to come back bigger. We're going to come back stronger. And we're going to come back more focused. And also with a few more draft picks that hopefully Mike Mayock is the guy who gets to pick them. I love y'all, man. Shout out to every single one of y'all who was interactive with this channel this year. You guys made this channel and myself feel the best that that I have ever felt and it's all because of every single one of you and also this football team later <laughs>